Okay, uh, today we're going to get into some uh, something a little bit different. We're going to do some uh, viewer questions. So I've got a whole list of questions here in my comments uh, section in uh, YouTube uh, Creator or YouTube uh, whatever, my Creator app here I have. Um, and the comments section, they're just all listed. So I'm going to go through a few of the questions and comments and stuff. Um, Okay, I got one 23 minutes ago from Furry Mittens. Excellent, cool looking dude. Really dapper dude. He's got a really like cool flat cap, tie, really nice collar shirt and a sweater on top of it. Awesome thumbnail. Furry Mittens uh, said 23 minutes ago. <laughs> 23 minutes ago. This is bizarrely my favorite new YouTube channel. Hats, guitar, and a look into the life of a genuine New Yorker. Let's give that a thumbs up and a heart. He's awesome. Yeah, I guess I am. Genuine New Yorker. I have a couple of five hours ago. I was sleeping. A couple of nice porcelinos. I believe they're vintage. They're vintage. I'll send you some photos for your opinion. No problem. You could send it. Uh, Try to send a, a link right here in the comments if you can. Huh. <laughs> Six hours goes. I was using this interesting video to fall asleep. Then I heard the sirens and I thought it was the cops outside. Then I realized you're in New York City too. I laugh out loud. We're going to get out of this soon and wear hats outside. That's from Derek. Six hours ago. Yeah, you hear all the sirens in my video all the time. I'm on Queens Boulevard and there's a whole bunch of hospitals here. And it's actually a lot of old people in Forest Hills, like lots of elderly people too. So you're hearing all these COVID uh, ambulances probably, you know, most of the time, which is strange. Um, oh, okay. Mikhail, he's a big, big viewer. Um, awesome dude uh, in Austria. He says, let's make this the weirdest number one hit ever. Preserve the curve. Save your rim. Okay. That was a weird uh, video, the last video. It's one of the reasons why I'm making this video so fast. It's because I don't want that Preserve the Curve video to be the number one top one on my, um, you know, Kevin from JJ Hat Center thing. So if that's like the number one video, people will check out my website and they'll play that one. Um, it was, yeah, it's kind of baked. All right. Um, how does one fall into the, this profession? Okay, that's a good question. Second question, how do you shape a pork pie head? Another good one. Okay, uh, I want to get out the pinch in the front. All right, let me grab a hat. Uh, a light colored hat. It'd be a little easier, I think, for you guys to see. All right, the first thing you got to do, okay, you've got your center crease and you've got your two pinches in front. You barely have it on this hat. All right. First thing you really should do is open it. You want to try to open your hat to open crown before you start any new shape. So you want to open it and what you want to really do is kind of like rub out all these lines with your hands, you know, on the inside and kind of just going like this. I'm rubbing, you know, I go on a particular crease, so like, like this line here. I'll rub it this way to try to get that line out. I'll go across the line, rubbing, rubbing, as I steam it. So you're steaming it, softening it up, then you rub it, or you do it at the same time. Make sure the hat's between you and the steam. It's very easy to get burnt if you're not used to steam. So soften it up, soften it up, soften it up, take it away, then rub it. Okay. If you're good enough, do it at the same time. Steam on the outside, hands on the inside. Okay, you want to just rub, rub, rub. Another good thing to do is to get something round, like some kind of round ball thing, and just jam it into there, like stretch this hat onto a round shape. That's the way they do it when they're blocking hats. So in other words, um, I don't know, a hat form, some anything you got that's round, a big ball or something, you just stick it in there and stretch it over. You don't want to stretch the hat too out of shape, but just, you know, Get it round and then steam it while it's all tight and like round like that. Steam out those creases. Another way to do it is you could stuff it. Stuff it really, really tight with some tissue. Get some tissue or 
those laundry bags, that plastic bag, so anything that's soft, and you just put so much in there and you cram it as much as you can, so it's really, really tight. When it's really tight, then you steam it, steam it, steam it, steam it, okay? You got like this ball shape, okay? Let it dry. After you steam, you gotta let it dry. You can't steam again until, see, here's the thing. Steaming is basically, it's cool, you heat it up, it gets soft, and then it cools again after you move it, okay? So, in order for it to work, the hat has to be cool and dry. So, if you want to change a hat. So, in other words, when you're going to do your pork pie, you got to try to let the hat dry, and it's got to be completely, completely dry before you shave. Okay. Doing a pork pie is pretty easy. Once you start open like this, that's most of it. You want to get a height for the pork pie. A good thing to do is to measure a pork pie or find out what the height of a regular pork pie hat is um, you got everybody wants to go low 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 you can't go that low though because you need enough height for the head you need depth so you got to figure out how much depth you can get I like to go at least double this band if this negative space here is smaller than that band it's gonna look stupid um, so okay let me turn my volume down down here so what you're doing is you're going to measure, let's say the area you, you decide on is, I don't know, two, two and a half inches right here, or two and one quarter inch, okay. So you want to go all the way around two and one quarter inch, get everything the same height. You could even, you know, I don't know, make little creases or little marks or something. And you want to just crease the hat at that same height all the way around. Okay, so in other words, you just, once you decide on the height, you can go all the way around, okay, don't pinch it really, really, really hard yet, you're still sketching out the shape, and you could take this, put it on your head like this, okay, see how that bubble's coming up, decide if you think it's deep enough, if the thing feels deep enough, you're good. If it's really shallow, it's going to be like up here. It's going to feel weird. If the hat looks really cool but doesn't feel good, you got to go deep. Okay? The thing with pork pies is we all want to go to shallow, 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 but you got to go a certain depth to get the hat stable on your head, you know? Maybe you want it to just touch your ears or something. That's good. Okay? Touch your ears or maybe a little more or something. Once you get your height down, you've agreed upon the height, Go around, make sure everything is even height. Measure it. Measure it. I measure it. I use a little ruler. Pork pie is the only one you can measure. Then pinch it in. Pinch, pinch, pinch. Go round, around, round, round, round. This is the method without using any like real equipment. It's just using your hands, basically. Your hands and your head. Okay. Then put it on your head like this, watch. Trace around. sloppy pork pie. The inside, you take your fingers, okay, neaten it up just a little bit. Now, this is the cool part. You take the hat, put it upside down, okay, on the tabletop, on a flat surface. Let me get something on a flat surface. Like, uh, I don't know, it doesn't matter. This is box, okay. Put it down on the tabletop like that, all right? What you want to do is go inside the hat, Okay, while it's down on the tabletop, and use your fist and go flat, boom, 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 flat, so this bubble gets flatter, okay? The other thing you're going to do is you're going to push it to the ends, so you want to push these middles out to the ends. The way to do that is only upside down on a tabletop, and you're pushing it outward, outward, outward. So what I do is I take my finger and I go around that perimeter, pushing outward, outward, outward. And you're also flat against the tabletop, flat. So I'm going like this and I'm pushing outward. So I'm making concentric circles bigger and bigger and bigger, okay? What that does is it makes this little space in here thinner and thinner and thinner. It makes the inner part wider, wider, wider. 
So this becomes not so much of a telescope, more of a pork pie. Let me see if I can do that on the tabletop or something. Hold on here. rough to do this without steam, but what you're going to do is steam the hat first and then do this circle thing, okay? What you wind up with is you know, you're getting a thinner mold there. So there it is. The little mold thing gets thinner and thinner because you're pushing it outward towards it. So you're doing circles on the inside against that little wall, that little lip there, and you're pushing against it, going outward, outward, outward. And that makes that little space, that little mold, get thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. I'm working right over here now, right there. Okay, watch. You're going outward, outward, outward. Outward, outward towards the wall. Okay, you have to do it upside down on a table. And then you can punch, you can make it flat. Punch, punch, punch. Steam, let it dry. If you got a good, uh, good pork pie at the end, hit it with some hairspray. Seal it in, you know. Get your final designs, you know, sealed in. Okay, that's to answer one of your questions. The other one was um, you were asking me how. Um, yeah, let me pull a pie this again. Yeah, we got a pork pie, kind of a high one. What do you think? We go a little lower. Yeah, it's really easy to shape hats on your head if your hat is soft enough. Um, you could take a center crease and turn it into a teardrop pretty easily you know, by just tracing around the back. And if you trace around the whole thing, you get a pork pie. That's your teardrop I just made. Center crease. Around the back, around the back. So you do the same thing, but all the way around. And you've got a teardrop. I mean, and you got a pork pie. So a teardrop is basically lowering the back. A pork pie is lowering the whole thing over the way around. So that was like a blind pork pie I did on my head, you know. They never come out even. But you could fix it. And you could practice this stuff with softer hats. Um, now, as far as how I got into this profession, uh, I would say... The whole story is, if you go to the um, What's My Story, Kevin from JJ Hat Center, just um, put that in the search. What's My Story, Kevin from JJ Hat Center. There's two parts. There's part one, part two. The part one basically has my whole story. Um, the long version, but um, hats, I fell into it. Um, I answered an ad uh, at art school. There was a, uh, a job board. And I answered the advertisement, and um, I'd already had nine years of retail experience. And I came to JJ's knowing about fur felt hats, X's, and Western hats, and you know, what fur felt was. And I also came to JJ knowing how to sell stuff. Um, I was a sneaker salesman, sporting goods. Mostly sneakers were our big thing, you know, it was like a sports store. We had everything, hockey pads, golf gloves, batting gloves, football pads, weight sets, all that stuff. And I know about all that stuff too, you know, like sports equipment um, and clothing. We sold like warm-up suits and, you know, like sweats and stuff, you know. So it was back in like the hip-hop days when it was first budding and everybody was wearing Champion and Nikes and Fila and stuff, you know. So Adidas stuff was hot too. So my pops was making some money off of that, you know. And this was before all those big shops opened, like, you know, Models and Foot Locker and that. You know, they were just starting to open up. Uh, Sports Authority was another one. And um, I had a lot of um, experience in retail. 
So when I answered the ad, um, they were like, okay, here's a guy with nine years retail experience who knows hats. You know? I don't even really know hats. I know a little bit about Western hats, but not, you know, not enough. So they said, okay, this guy's perfect, and they hired me. Um, I basically learned on the job. I mean, that's what anybody does when they come to work at a hat shop. Most of us, you know, or maybe we like hats or something like that, you know. But you don't know hats until you start working at a hat shop. Then you really know hats. It's a little different. Um, it's, um, you know, selling hats is different. And uh, selling high volume hats, too, is like a, kind of a different thing, too. So I learned on the job. And um, that's how I learned it. You know, I, I watched hat makers. Um, uh, for a short time, I was kind of hustling, and I had my own hat company called Kevin Todd New York. I think somewhere I had a box of like 10,000 stickers and labels from that hat company, which I could probably start up again one day. But uh, I was just cashing in on this trend. There was this trend, these sort of pin hats were getting really popular, like Western hats with like really wild colors, um, furry pin hats, like, you know, beaver finishes the long hair beard. I was making this stuff and trimming it with like rhinestones and real fur, um, Swarovski crystals, um, fox fur, beaver fur. I was using all kinds of like expensive um, stuff and, you know, marking a few up and the rest of them were you know, selling like regular beaver finished hats and stuff. And I was doing okay. Um, but what I did is I found a guy to basically block all the hats for me. He was on 38th Street. Um, he was an old legend dude. He was in, he was in a commercial too, because his studio was really cool. He smoked these little brown cigar cigarette things called Moors, a little more cigar uh, cigarettes. He was real cool. And um, he used to block all the hats for me, this old dude. And um, I watched how he worked and how he built them and how he uh, trimmed his hats and stuff, you know. So I would have this guy make me like, uh, I don't know how many hats at a time, 20 hats. I would get 20 hat bodies, make him a list. I would say, I want these to go Western. I want these here with a open crown and a, what do you call it, a fedora brim, you know. And he would make them all. They would come back as basically unfinished hats, you know, with uh, no trimming. And I would do all the, the bands and ribbons and crystals and furs. And sometimes I would just get like a fur boa, you know, like a... And I would just put the, the boa around it and it would just look like it had a fur band. Or I would get like a, a thing of crystals and just glue that on or sew that on. And it wasn't easy, but it was kind of easy, you know. It wasn't easy because I had no experience, but it was easy. You know, I was basically just trimming them. Um, that was cool watching watching that guy work. And I remember I used to beg him. I said, "Let me just hang out here. And I'll do whatever you want. I'll sweep your floors, and you know, I'll watch the place. I'll answer the doors and everything for you. Go get your uh, lunch. If you could just let me watch you block hats." And that's what I did. I hung out <coughs> with him and his buddy. There was you know, his buddy there. They would just hang out and they would drink shots and smoke these little more cigarettes, these long brown cigarettes. And the place got real filled with smoke all the time. And I hung out with these two old dudes all day long, just watching them work, you know. Um, and I never really became a hat maker, um, so I don't have a lot of skills there, you know, but I've watched it done, you know, I've seen people sew on sweatbands, sew bands on, uh, ribbons, and, and, you know, so I can do that, but, um, the way I do it, I kind of jury rig it, you know, my sewing skills are what I learned in home ec and, you know, high school and stuff, and, uh, so I kind of fake it, um, but that's something I recommend, um, getting off of this huge tangent of mine is try to find a hat maker and tell them, look, uh, all I want to do is just sit down in your chair and watch you work, and I promise I'll do anything you ask me. If you want me to just sew sweatbands for you all day, you teach me once how to sew a sweatband, and I'll sew all your sweatbands for free. 
or you want me to sweep the floor or organize your, your office, I'll do all that. I'll work. I'll work for free. All I ask is that you let me watch you work. And if you're real cool and you promise him everything and ask for nothing, most likely he'll start showing you stuff. You work and go, you see what I'm doing here? I'm uh, using alcohol to uh, clean it. Uh, and then, you know, they start kind of showing off a little bit and, and respecting you that you're hanging out there, you know. Like, this young man really wants to work, you know. Okay, let him work. And they put you to work. And uh, whatever it is, getting their sandwiches or just answering the doors so they don't have to answer the phone in the door. You could be there like a secretary for them. And um, you save them time, you know. And get to watch guys, you know, stretching um, felt over hat blocks, you know, kind of like uh, they have these wood pushers. The first thing they do is they wet the, the felt. It's like a big hat, wide hat body. Um, the block is like three pieces. It's like a stand and a little part, and then the crown, you know, the brim, and the block. I'm sorry, it's like a little stand. Then there is a brim block. And there's a band block, and then there's a crown block, and there's all the you know little wood pieces. The stand elevates it. The, the brim almost looks like a, it's a toilet seat. Almost looks like a ring, a wooden ring. Looks just like a toilet seat actually. And then the band block looks like a pretty much like a disc, a wooden disc about this big, and that fits right in here. And uh, the crown block looks just like this crown. Most of them are open. Some of them have shapes like teardrops and stuff. Open crown is always the best because then you can shape it yourself. A center crease is super easy to do. A teardrop is something that if you have a little artistic ability, you could do a way better teardrop with your hands. More graceful, more ups, downs, lines, more flair than a wooden teardrop, you know. So, I mean, that's the hope. There are a lot of people who don't have that artistic edge, um, and they don't have the time, and they don't have the patience. So they just want a block with a teardrop, and they just want to whack them out. Bam, 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 that's fast. Other people, they like to do it themselves. So they block everything open with open blocks. Um, hat body is like a big, wide, wide disc. It almost looks like a big floppy lady's hat. They take the felt and they stretch it over the block and they push, push, push and stretch it because the crown is only about this high when it starts, but you want it to get way higher. So they're stretching it with wooden sticks. The sticks they call pusher sticks. And um, the wet, uh, wet felt is actually kind of stretched onto this block and tied. They have ropes, those little like slots on the sides of the um, wooden blocks where it fits. And you tie it on really tight. You tie it in a couple places sometimes. And then you use these 